In today's lesson on fractions, we're going to look at how fractions are related to multiplying and dividing. Fractions can be represented as a division of the numerator by the denominator. So here we have a over b. That can also be written as a divided by b. For example, 5 thirds can be written as 5 divided by 3. We have learned when adding fractions that, for instance, here, if we were to add up all of these 1 thirds, we would get 5 thirds. Well, we see here that we're adding the same fraction over and over. And we see that we have 5 1 thirds. So this problem is exactly equal to 5 times 1 third. Because remember, a repeated addition is the same as multiplication. So 5 thirds can also be written as 5 times 1 third. And we know that 5 thirds is the same as 5 divided by 3. So 5 times 1 third can also be written as 5 divided by 3. When we think of a fraction in terms of division, for instance 5 over 3 or 5 divided by 3, we think of the denominator as the number of equal portions that are needed. So when we take that the whole thing, for instance, a 5, and we're going to divide it up into 3. We need to divide that 5 up into 3 equal portions. And we think of the numerator as representing the total amount that's being divided. So in this case, we could say that we had 5 whole things being divided into 3 equal portions. Let's look at a picture of that to help us understand it a little bit better. So let's look again at the 5 thirds, which is the same as 5 divided by 3, which is the same as 5 times 1 third. So let's take a look at how we're going to share, for instance, 5 pizzas equally among 3 people. So we have our 5 pizzas, that's what we're dividing up, and we want to share equally among 3 people. So we have to divide each of the 5 pizzas into 3 equal parts, 3 equal shares. Now that we've cut the five pizzas into three equal parts, we can go ahead and we can share each of those pieces amongst the three friends. We now have a total of 15 pieces, and we have to divide it so that each friend, each of those three people, has an equal amount of the 15 pieces that there are. If we look at it, they've each received five pieces. So each person has five pieces, and if we were to put that together, for instance, we'll use the blue pieces for our blue friend. If we put our blue friend's pieces of the pizza all together, we will see that he has one whole pizza and two-thirds of a pizza. We also could have done that mathematically, because we see here that we have an improper fraction, and we know how we can go ahead and change that. If I changed it by dividing that numerator by the denominator, which is really, again, what I am doing, I would have gotten one and two-thirds pizzas. When I'm solving word problems that involve the division of whole numbers, how can I predict if I'm going to get a whole number, a mixed number, or a fraction. The first thing that you're going to look at is the total number of equal portions that are needed. That's represented by your denominator. Then you take a look at your total amount that's being divided. That's your numerator. So if your numerator is smaller than your denominator, you simply have a fraction. For instance, if I have three candy bars and I want to divide it amongst seven people, three divided by seven, 
The seven is the total equal portions that are needed. So that's going to be my denominator. And the total amount that's being divided, which is the three whole candy bars, that's my numerator. Well, I'm going to end up having, they're each going to get three-sevenths of one whole thing. So my, my number that I'm dividing up is smaller than the amount of portions that I need. So therefore, I'll have a fraction. If my numerator is larger than my denominator, but is not a multiple of the numerator, you will have a mixed number. For instance, if I have 12 candy bars that I want to divide amongst 5 people, I'm going to do 12 divided by 5. 12 is going to be my numerator, and 5 is going to be my denominator. 12 is larger than 5. However, 12 is not a multiple of 5. Therefore, I know I'm going to have a mixed number. The people are each going to get, you know, a whole number of candy bars, but they're also going to get a fractional part of candy bars. In this case, I would have two and two-fifths candy bars for each of those five people. If your numerator is larger than your denominator, and it is a multiple of your, that should be denominator, much better now that we fixed it. Let's step back and try it again. If your numerator is larger than your denominator, and it is a multiple of your denominator, you will have a whole number. For instance, if I have 32 candy bars, and I want to divide them evenly amongst four people, the number of equal portions needed would be four, so that's my denominator. And the total amount that's being divided, the 32 candy bars, would be my numerator. And I can see that the numerator is larger than my denominator, and 32 is also a multiple of 4. Therefore, I know I'm going to have a whole number. And when I divide 32 by 4, I get 8. So the key thing is, when you're deciding if you're going to have a whole number, a mixed number or a fraction, you simply look at your numerator and denominator. And remember these three little tips. Let's look at a problem. If nine people want to share a 50 pound sack of rice equally by weight, how many pounds of rice should each person get? The number of equal portions that are needed is nine because I have nine people that want to share this sack of rice. So that's going to be my denominator. The amount that's being divided up is the 50 pound sack of rice. So that's going to be my numerator because my numerator is the total amount that's being divided up. And remember that 50 over nine is really the same as 50 divided by 9. And from what we've learned earlier, that would also be the same as 50 times 1 ninth. Let's go back and look at our fraction, 50 ninths. My numerator is larger than my denominator, and I also know that 50 is not a multiple of 9. Therefore, I'm I'm predicting that my answer is going to be a mixed number. I'm going to go ahead and set up my division problem like it looks like a long division problem. Now we're ready. We have 50 divided by 9. 50, 9 can go into 50 5 times. 5 times 9 is 45. I'm going to go ahead and subtract and I have to borrow 10 minus 5 is 5. I check it. Everything's good. 5 smaller than 9. And I have nothing to bring down. So 5 is going to be my numerator. And my denominator is going to be 9. So each of the 9 people is going to get 5 whole pounds of rice and 5 ninths of a pound. So they get a total of 5 and 5 ninths pounds of rice from the 50 pound sack. Between what two whole numbers does your answer lie? 
Well, 5 and 5 ninths is more than 5, but it's less than 6 because we, we have more than 5. We have 5 pounds and a little bit more, but we don't quite have 6. So 5 and 5 ninths is between 5 and 6. So we have 5 and 5 ninths right there between those two. Tracy has five apples that she wants to share equally among seven friends. How much of the apples will they each get? Well, we're going through and we're taking five apples and we're dividing it among seven people. So we know that what's the equal portions that are needed? We need seven equal portions. And the amount that's being divided up is the five apples. If I look at that, my numerator is smaller than my denominator, therefore I'm going to have a fraction. And they will simply each get five-sevenths of a whole apple. So if we go through and we take those five apples and divide them each up into seven pieces, each of the seven people will get five of those pieces. So each person will get five-sevenths. We could show that with a picture. I've taken rectangles and drawn them to represent the five apples. And I cut each one of the apples into seven pieces because that's the number of equal portions we needed. If I go through and I go to count up all the pieces I now have, I have 35 pieces. And I have to divide that equally amongst the seven people. And if I take 35 and divide up equally amongst the seven people, each person would get five pieces. And if each apple is cut up into seven and we put it together, they would have five-sevenths of a whole apple, which is right back to what we had up here, five-sevenths. So if Tracy had five apples that she wanted to share equally among seven friends, each person would receive five-sevenths of an apple. In summary, Remember that fractions can be represented as a division of a numerator by a denominator. So 5 thirds is equal to 5 divided by 3. And that can also be related to multiplication as well. 5 divided by 3 is also equal to 5 times 1 third. Any questions? Make sure to go back and watch any parts of the video that you feel that you need to, and also refer to any of the notes that you took during the video. Still any further questions? Make sure that you see your teacher for assistance. Above all, remember to keep calm and enjoy fractions. They're all around you.